Well, good morning. Before we begin our study, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we invite your presence here as we open your word together. We are thankful for each morning that we have to study. We're thankful for the light that has come across our path as we have spent time in your word. We ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to work upon our hearts. We pray that you can help us as we sort through um, the story of Samson, that these truths uh, will affect us and those around us. We pray for this movement. We pray for the needs that each person has. We know the struggles that each one faces, and we ask that we can be uh, an influence in their lives and in the lives of those around us. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, I've been looking quite a bit at uh, these passages and these lines. I don't know if I have a good answer uh, to all of the questions I have. Hopefully people are finding this helpful. There's a few less of us here this morning. Not sure particularly why, but that's what happens sometimes. Um, <clears throat> so Judges chapter 14, we were looking at putting this on the line of Samson. And uh, we had addressed this lion roaring. And um, this lion, the roaring of this lion opens up this opportunity for this riddle. So when we are going to look at this on a line, um, we put, put this lion, um, which is uh, Judges 14.5, when the lion roars. And uh, did whole study on that. There's still probably more we could do on that. But since this lion opens up this riddle, so the lion roaring is a formalization of the message. We say that's November 9th, 2019. So we have this, uh, um, the next step would be um, the slaying of the foundation, with, which leads to uh, the empowerment of the message. So what particularly is the message of the lion roaring that we find in the story of Samson that relates to our history? If it relates to 11.9, uh, nine, what is that? So I know we're jumping right into where we had left off. Because the lion roars at 9-11 and 11-9. We have these two, even though there's one event, one lion roaring in the story of Samson, there are two way marks that answer to that symbol. And they are um, 6,634 days apart, which is 107 times 62, 107 representing the 10th day of the seventh month, and 62 representing the 62 weeks, which in the midst of the week is 31. So 62 divided by 2 is 31. <clears throat> so what is the truth? What is the message that ex that's understood? So we've already gone through this, but if somebody can just put this into their own words. Would this be the beginning of the midnight cry? Okay, well, the midnight cry is going to be the second angel's message. So I don't know what you mean. Well, we're aware that at 9-11, we have the 
first and the second angel's message being brought forth again because otherwise we're not going to have the message of revelation 18 being brought forth okay i understand what you're saying now remember samson is a zoom into the arrival of the third angels in the line of the judges right and the line of the judges is a zoom into the arrival of the second angel in uh, a line, the line above that, right? So we understand that our history of this movement, which we have this way mark that we call the arrival of the second angel, that's actually 11.9, even though we originally put it at 9.11, and it is there, but that's a different line, right? Agreed. So so we can see that that the empowerment of the first angel is 9-11 and the arrival of the second angel was a zoom into a way mark that we can call now 11-9. But when we first put that way mark there that the second angel arrives at 9-11, it's because we were now entering into this new line. And Jeff wasn't able to discern that because we hadn't passed enough through history to understand those lines. So we know then that this 9-11-11-9 shows up in this line of Samson, uh, which is going over the whole line of the judges, in a sense, because it's starting at 9-11. But it's the arrival of the third angel. So it is in that arrival of the second angel that Jeff noticed because when he, when he had 9-11 and he says the second angel's empowered right that's what we initially understood and then we started to pass through history and he recognized that the second angel had arrived at 9-11 it wasn't just the empowerment of the first angel he, he had he had entered into this new line. This movement had moved into this new line. And, but we're looking at um, a step down from there, right? So that this, this history right now, that is our movement expands or encompasses much more than what we imagined. It, and, and in some ways it encompasses what, what we initially believed that this was a movement that would restore that it was a reformation of um um and a revival a revival and a reformation of adventism that would happen prior to the sunday law but then we became much more narrow focused we started to focus upon this movement which really doesn't seem to be accomplishing its task but this is a necessary part of that bigger line. That is the arrival of the second angel, 9-11, in that bigger line that starts at 1989 and goes to the Sunday law. That arrival of that second angel is what Jeff recognized, that the second angel's message arrives. And this message particularly relates to the understanding of prophecy because even though 9-11 was the empowerment of the first angel, when we start thinking about uh, that line that relates to the understanding of prophecy, that is the lion roaring, this little book open that happens in our history, we know it happens in 1989 that the little book is open because that's the time of the end if we're going to parallel Millerite history. But for Seventh-day Adventists, when the church rejects Miller's rules and adopts spiritual formation, um, I don't know if I would say that there, Angela, because we have to remember the ironic nature of this. So I wouldn't say it's a counterfeit because this is illustrating Christ, not a counterfeit of Christ. 
but anyway, I have to think about that. Um, so, so now we we recognize that eleven nine is this victory within this movement. At least that's what this first message is about: the victory within this movement over that method of study that produced Parminder's theology, which is really where Adventism is going, right? That is, Parminder's movement illustrated the direction of the Adventist church. It prefigures, typifies what's going to happen with the Adventist church. Now, the arrival of the second angel, we we would recognize as um, Revelation 18, right? So Revelation 18, Ellen White saw as the Sunday law. So when we put the arrival of the second angel at 9-11, uh, we definitely have to recognize that, that we're in the Sunday law, we're in Revelation 18. So does this help at all, Dwight, with what you said? Yes. Okay. I know it was a rather long explanation. So we we have this line roaring in Judges chapter 14. And, and this lion roaring, Samson, of course, uh, is going to uh, you know, kill this lion. And, and this is going to set up this riddle. So he's, we know that there's the Timnath, or Timna, um, which means a portion, right? It's related to the word manna, which is 50 shekels. And now what Angela put here was that in Judges 14, verse 1, 2, and 5, and 1 Peter 5, 8 is the counterfeit of Christ offering salvation. Now, because of the ironic nature of the story, um, I don't know if we can put a counterfeit here. It actually has to represent Christ in a positive sense once we flip it around ironically. Um, and, that, and it's just ironically morally, right? It's not ironically in every sense. Now, the reference there, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, uh, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, about seeking whom he may devour. So the application that, that Angela is suggesting would go contrary to what I had suggested that this is the opening of prophecy where she would look at it. Well, it's, it would be persecution. Do you have any thoughts on that, Angela? Now, I agree with you. What I'm saying is first Peter five, eight is the counterfeit of what we're learning here. That while Christ is nurturing his people and wanting to reveal, reveal his, his word and his ways and his, his personality to us, Satan is trying to, cut us off, persecute us, destroy us. Okay, so it's so just the contrast between the two roaring lions. Okay, I see what you're saying. So so at 11.9, we do have that conflict. We have Parminder's prophecy and Tess's of what would happen at 11.9. And Parminder led away all, you know, pretty much virtually most of FFA, right? especially the young people. So just a bunch of old people were left for the most part. Um, so, so that helps establish 11.9 in, in these two different aspects. But we know that the lion roaring there is prophecy in its truest sense. Because at 11.9, we have... Um, both in the date confirming the method of study of analyzing Old Testament prophecy is confirmed. 
Ezekiel, and also New Testament prophecy, Revelation 9, is confirmed there. We also have this um, uh, false prophecy, right? So we have this confirmation. And then we also have the prophecies themselves, the 273, which Tess tried to use. And, and that was the interesting thing, I think, with Tess and Parminder, is their use of truth to undermine truth by simply mixing it with error. I mean, it, I mean it's a common trick, but uh, you know, it should have been discerned by us much more readily than it was. But you know, part of my problem was trusting people, trusting Parminder. Even though I knew there were th things wrong, you know, everybody has things wrong. So um, you can just think people are honestly wrong. But there was deception there, which is a hard thing to discern at times, especially when it's mixed with so much truth. Okay, so if we're if we're placing this roaring line, and then we're saying from that roaring line, there's this riddle. Um, it would be this riddle that would be, um, is the riddle also connected to this formalization? Is it connected to the empowerment? How do we address this riddle? Because with this riddle, we have um, a feast attached to it, right? So, He's going to uh, give this riddle. Um, so Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. This is Judges 14, verse 12. If you can certainly declare it within, declare it me within seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. But if he cannot declare it me, then ye shall give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. And they said unto him, put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. And he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. Okay. Now, we know that there is the seven days of the feast. It's going to be a seven-day feast. We have these 30 companions, right? And um, we're going to have in 1414 where he gives this riddle. And then it, it mentions this three days. They could not expound in three days. They could not expound the riddle. Now, why does it mention the three days? I mean, there's seven days of the feast. A test. Okay. As you're looking at this in a ironic sense, the three days of this feast could also be applied to the three days where Christ was taken up, crucified, laid to rest, and then rose again. Because that's all part of a seven-day feast, right? Because isn't the... the um, part of the, the week of Christ, you mean? Right. I mean, that, that whole... The Feast of Unleavened Bread, isn't it, to run for seven days? Uh, yeah. So you have the three days of Christ, and now you have these three days of Samson's Feast. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, and, and this is kind of strange, because you know, it says after three days they could not expound the riddle. And then it says, it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, entice thy husband. 
that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee in thy father's house with fire. Have ye call us, have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost hate me and lovest me not. Um yeah. No. Okay, but but take this take this one further step. Okay. <laughs> Didn't Christ pose a riddle before the scribes and the Pharisees that if you destroy this building in three days, I will raise it up? Yeah. So did they discern the riddle? No. So here you have another parallel with this with Samson and with Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I don't see it, see it as ironic at all because it's only moral irony here. I mean that we would take it's it's just to me it's a straight symbol okay so when we look at this part though samson's wife wept before him and said thou dost hate me now it says that they came to on the seventh day of the feast that they said unto samson's wife entice thy husband but it says she wept in verse 17 she wept before him the seven days while the feast lasted and it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him. So how do how do we unravel this sort of a, apparent contradiction with um, the seventh day being mentioned here um, as being after three days? And then she's going to weep before him all seven days of the feast but it says they came to her on the seventh day how do, how do we resolve that So we're going to have the three days, right? And it came to pass on the seventh day. So what do we do with that? Well, can you break it down a little bit by four days in front, three days in back? Okay, well, so you have a 4-3 combination. I mean, it's just, you know, part of the problem is how you have Hebrew narrative. So, so if they're going to come to her on the seventh day and say, and entice your husband. But it says, she wept before him this whole time. I mean, but it says... You know, after three days, they could not expound the riddle, riddle, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife. So the question is, why do we have seventh day? So we have three days mentioned. And then it says, just if you're reading the narrative, it says it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, right? And then it says she wept before him the seven days while the feast lasted. And then the men of the city come to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, right? And they have the answer to the riddle. So the question is, how do we, how do we resolve this puzzle? Not the, the riddle of Samson, but the chronology part of it. Any relation to the eagle and the vine riddle in Ezekiel 17? I don't know. So we know there's seven days of the banquet. He proposes this riddle. 
they accept, you know, this, this, the conditions. And he declares the riddle. And, and they can't declare the riddle in three days. They're not able to in three days. But then it says it came to pass on the seventh day. So do they come on the seventh day and talk to Samson's wife? I would have to wonder if they were not trying to see, you know, when they when they saw that they could not discern the riddle. I'm wondering if they didn't come to her pretty much throughout the seven days and that her tears were so that she could reveal this for them. Okay. Now, there's one translation says on the fourth day they came to Samson's wife. Right. Um, I'm not sure what that's based on. You're going to see it in some of the modern translations. <clears throat> what is Young show? He says seventh day. Okay. And, and we have the same thing here in the Hebrew says seventh right so you know obviously some people think there's a typographical error there even even the greek uh says seventh day it, it's got to be a it's there for a reason we need to figure it out yeah that's what i'm saying and, you know, I don't like when people correct the Bible thinking that there's a typo. Um, yeah. So what I would think, and this is just my guessing, is that that they go to her every day, not just the seventh day. I can, I can buy that. Right. But... You know, whether that's clear in the Hebrew or not. Um, so it was in the it day. Makes sense she was crying all seven days. Yeah, because in, in the seven days, it could be. So it could be referring to all seven days, that they're going to her every, every day of the feast. But. You know, I could see why some people say, well, they didn't expand it in three days, so it must have been fourth day that's being referred to. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not similar enough words, fourth and seventh, to think that it's a typo. And I just don't believe that there's many typos in the scriptures other than maybe some spelling errors here or there but nothing that would change the meaning that that drastically. So so let's say she they come on each of the days, each of the seven days, that they're going to say this to her, that they're going to put this pressure on her. Um, so Samson's wife's going to weep before Samson. Um, so we, we have this riddle that's declared and we have the work of the enemies, right? Which usually happens, um, in, in connection with the empowerment of the first message before the arrival of the second. <clears throat> So we get to the seventh day. She's fine. Samson's finally going to break down. He's going to tell his wife. And what do we do then? How do we how do we take it? Do we take it once the riddle is revealed? 
is that the empowerment. And so it says, you know, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down to Ascalon and slew 30 men of them and took the spoil, their spoil and gave changes of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. His anger was kindled. He went up to his father's house. And Samson's wife is going to be given to his companion, who he used as a friend. So what is, what is this event? How would we describe it? And how would we place this on our lines? If this is the empowerment, uh, what is it describing in our history? So if it's this third way, Mark, and we're, we're going to just say this is the story of the riddle. What particular aspects of this story uh, tie us to whatever date? So we have the, the 30 changes of garment, right? The 30 friends. How do we place this in this story? Are we going to take this as 30, 30, 30 again? That's possibly divided by 12 to get this um, 25252.5, which gives us that division of time? Well, um, you, have the need, <clears throat> you have the need for the 30, but here, right? But here we only have two 30s. Well, you got three 30s. Actually, three. You have, you, the record, you have the need for them. Then he went down and he took them from somebody else. So there's there is another 30 right there. Yeah. So you, have, and, yeah. you have the 30 and a 30 and a 30. Okay. So it, it's there. Yeah, I see it now. So it matches up with 10, 4, and 12, 9, then in Judges. Yeah. Yeah. So we have these 30, 30, 30s again. And that usually indicates the division of 252 and. Uh, 525. So if we put 252 here and I was just thinking that the, the bridegroom is supposed to or the father of the bridegroom, which is it's supposed to supply gifts for the for the folks that come come to the feast, right? So Samson was gambling that they would never be able to divulge his riddle. And he has to go and slay some of them to supply. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, um, exactly. Well, you also have to remember that um, the beginning of this story, wasn't he um, kind of kind of miss it because it's only a little bit of a line but it's the Lord's using him to have something against the Philistines or the Philistines against him. Yeah, so I, God's going to use him. God using him at this point, still. Yeah. So, so as far as putting uh, dates, I mean, I'm just going to say that that riddle relates to uh, July 18th. Right. So what it appears. Okay. So that's going to be 250 days after November 9th. Now, I put 525 here, so I'm suggesting that the second angel arrives at um, December 25th, 2021. Yeah. Um 
that was 252 days, not 252. 252 and 525, we got. There you go. All right. So. So there's there's what I'm suggesting, just as you know, it's, we're, we're trying things out. So this this would be consistent with the idea that the riddle is July 18th, and also related to the 777. Yes. Okay. So. So we're, we're taking this riddle, though. So remember the riddle, it has to do with Christ, doesn't it? The three days? Yes, there's, yes. We and, the, the three days is in there. and the seven days. Now, if we think about this riddle, um, this riddle, the 777, Stephen, of course, in and Odilio um, put this together, sort of mostly Stephen, probably, but a little bit of Odilio, um, with taking the November 9th and July 18th and the December 25th, and they put this together. They get this 777 structure with the 252 and the 525, right? We also get the 252 after July 18th with the 273. Right. But this isn't going to be illustrated in the line the way that I put that out. What's important here is this study that deals with the two Lamechs. So remember, if you take the name Lamech and you look at the English gematria, we get 18720. Right. That is, if we multiply, right. that's not that's taking the letters in English gematria and multiplying them. So you get this, this number, 18720. Now, I'm not going to know about that um, until just before November 9th. Um, it's going to be a few days before, because Odilio and Stephen are doing these presentations at the School of the Prophets. Right now, I'm planning to go down there on, on uh, November 7th, right, to come back on November 11th. So I'm just there for a few days, but um, and, I, and I'm just trying to remember if it was while I was at the airport that I watched the video. Anyway, it, if 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 I'm remembering correctly, where they um, they do that, it could have been something else. I could be remembering wrongly, um, but we have these two. Lamex, and this was a major part of my study is that the two Lamex produced this 777 structure, right? So that has to do with the week of Christ study. So these are somehow put together. I'm trying to remember what it was. I don't know. Um, let me see here. Uh, So I'm going to just see in, in my emails where that first shows up. Hmm. Yeah, so you know, when I look at my email and I type in 18720, I mean the first hit I get is April uh of 2020. So um So 
So obviously it wasn't set in, sent in an email uh, earlier. So I think that's correct. I think it was uh, just prior to November 9th. So we get this, and, and I would look at this gematria and this dealing with Lamech and putting together this 777. I mean, this is a riddle, right? Yes. Okay. So, so that riddle is going to be presented. Um, and, and I think that that would relate to this whole understanding of this symbolic use of 18720. So that's July 18, 2020. Did you do a paper on that for the Mac, the two Lamex? Yes, but that paper was done like in 2015 maybe 2016, something like that. So it didn't have this particular information in it? I didn't, I didn't use the gematria multiplication of the name Lamech, no, to get 18720. Okay. Right. But I did deal with the 777. And the way that that was divided was the 343 and the 434, right? So there's 434 years from, you know, for the 62 weeks. And then if you multiply seven times seven times seven, you get 343, you add the two together, you get 777, right? So it was all having to do with this structure of the 70 weeks. And so when Stephen used the 252 and the 525, I mean, that was just another way to get 777. And, you know, there is also... Um, these passages in is it Second Kings, so Second Kings twenty five verse two, the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah, and Jeremiah fifty two five, so the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. So you have this 252 and this 525, one in 2 Kings, one in Jeremiah. They give you the same verse about the siege, the end of the siege. Right? So, so this 252 and this 525 are tied together as part of this 777 structure. And uh, the, the multiplier... How did that turn out? That's one eight seven two zero or two zero zero. One no one eight seven two zero. So all it is is, um, I mean, you can go to uh, the Gematria cal calculator um, that uh, Iran has, and it's just simply. Oh, the the letters in Lamech are also the Fibonacci sequence. So that is. Uh, one, three, five, eight. So what do you mean by that? That they're so anyway, the normal product is one eight seven two zero. That's twelve times one times thirteen times five times three times eight. And what, what do you say about the Fibonacci sequence there? Yeah, the first, it's all the numbers in the first, I mean, the first seven numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, because it's, it's 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. Okay, just using um, all of the digits. So that is, you're taking, what about the 12? Are you just taking that as? Yeah, the 12 one. is, I just put the 12 in the second place, so it's 1, yeah. 1, 2. Okay, I see what you're saying. So one, one, two, um, three, five, eight, thirteen. So that is the L is a twelve, A is one, M is thirteen. Okay, so you just put them in order, and and it gives you the Fibonacci sequence. Well, that's pretty interesting. Okay, and thank you, Aaron, for that explanation. Yeah, thanks.
So, so all of these things dealing with Lamech, it's this riddle uh, that we have. And now, if we also take the reverse, um, product. So there's the forward product. Um, it, it is divisible by 18720, but of course, that I don't know if that's always the case. But anyway, we, we have this, this riddle. So we can say that this riddle uh, fits into the structure that we already have. We can put July 18th as the empowerment, but this means we make uh, December uh, 25th, 2021 as the arrival of the second. So there's a message that's going to be testing this movement. That first message is relating to this whole structure that we call the 777 structure, right? It's gonna test this movement after 9-11 or more specifically after 11-9, right? So now since December 25th, 2021, this movement is being exposed to a second message and this message would then be seen in judges chapter 15 right is that what we're going to say I'm just going to go through this chronologically we say that that first part that that marriage and that riddle that's going to be that um formalization and empowerment of a message and so in judges 15 we're going to have the second angel's message arrive. Now, remember what we did with this um, second message. So the second message relates to the wheat harvest, right? So it's going to be about Pentecost. And we had two messages that are connected together. Right, that's Colin mess Colin's message and Odilio's. They're seven weeks apart. We can uh, so we'll we'll read this over here, and we'll see. We'll just look at this again. So, came to pass within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest. So this is Pentecost. That Samson visited his wife with a kid. And he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber, but her father would not suffer him to go. So we know there's this, uh, this kid offering. We connected all these different things together, uh, dealing with uh, Pentecost, um, to show that this is Pentecost. Um, and her father said, I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her, therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than thee? Or fairer than she, take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure? And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between the two tails. So now we're going to have these foxes. And we address this in our studies um, with this uh, January 11th and December 25th, 2022. Um, so we have Pentecost, right? And we have this wheat harvest tied together. And, and there's, um, there's also, uh, we talked about two loaves, right? So I don't know if people... There's the two loaves on Pentecost that are after, offered. So, so what's happening here it, in this That's story? The wave offering, wasn't it? We connected the wave offering to that. With the first fruits, yeah. 
So you got the first fruits with the wave offering. You have then the seven weeks to Pentecost. And so we we take this December 25th, 2021, with Odilio's presentation on February 12th, 2022. And then we have these 300 foxes we take as uh, December 25th, 2022, and January 11th, 2023. And this span of time that's going to go to the first day of the fifth month in 2030, which is April 5th, 2030. And we looked at the fact that we could uh, take these months, 30, 30, 30, and not just apply them as, you know, in the way that we did, dividing them by 12 to give us this 252 and 525. But we could also apply this as the 2,658 days from December 25th, 2022 to April 5th, 2030. And that is taking the actual months, because December 25th, 2022 is the first day of the 10th month. All right, so we're, we're going to take this symbol and we're going to attach it to April 5th, 2030. So this message, if we're going to take the line of Samson, is going to give us a message. So these 300 foxes we know are these structural chiasms, right? We tied it to the story of Noah, the 300 days, which is expressed as two periods of 150 days. We have these 300 foxes in pairs, 150 pairs, right? They're tied tail to tail. Um, we, of course, have the 300 in Gideon and other 300s, 300, uh, 300 year spans, which we get uh, in connection with the Philistines and the Ark. Um, and... Uh, um, that period of time in which uh, it's in the story of Jephthah, where they there was 300 years mentioned there. Ellen White gives us the 300 years of the Ark. Um, what else? Well, there was the perimeter around the temple, or the was 300 cubics. Okay. So we have all these symbols of 300. And, and what do they really symbolize? So the warriors who were focused, um, I, I believe it has something to do with the arc. Okay, I didn't quite catch what you said. I'm thinking that it, it has something to do with with God's law. Okay, 300 has to do with God's law. We know it has the tables, right? right. So it was 300 of the 1843 chart made and 300 of the 1850 chart made. Right? Yeah. So you got the 65, um, Iran explained that 300 foxes equals 365, like Enoch, the 65. Are you saying from the first day of the first month to Pentecost is 65 days? Yeah, 65 days to Pentecost. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then the 300. So that gives us this year. And we see that in the story of Enoch. 65 and 300 to get 365. Okay. So, so again, we have all of these symbols just, just coming together, right? And the significance in this movement, in the time in which this signific is significant, uh, is going to become really significant after December 25th, 2021.
right? So this is now going to uh, connect with these other dates. And, and what we, um, you know, so here in chapter 15, we're, we're looking at this, oh, there's something else that's going to look like, I can't remember what it was. Um, oh, I forgot now what I was doing. Oh, yeah, I remember. Right, because there's going to be a lot happening in connection with the Philistines. And, and one of the things we're going to see once... Um, once we get to um, First Samuel, I mean, it's going to there's going to be everything still about the Philistines. So part of it has to do with, and I still wish Stephen would have come to these studies so that we could talk about his chart and the chronology of it. Um, but we we believe that this story overlaps with the stories in First Samuel regarding Eli and Samuel. That there's this history is is occurring at the same time. It just doesn't show you that in Judges. You know, a lot of the Judges, uh, you know, really addresses for the most part northern Israel, not so much what's happening in Judah. Where once you get to Samuel, you're going to start dealing with the temple and with Judah, um, et cetera, right? Basically establishing that that the, the sanctuary is going to be in Jerusalem is eventually what's going to happen in, in, in the story of Samuel and Kings. But, you know, it's, it's going to take time, right? So... <clears throat> So we now have this situation with Samuel, which or with Samuel, with Samson, that's going to be addressing this conflict that he has um, regarding the Philistines. So he's going to have a conflict with the Philistines, and this is going to be over his wife, right? Because she's given to someone else. So he's going to. Uh, Bring revenge. So the 300 foxes, as we can see above in the chart above, we have tied to January 11th, 2023, and December 25th, 2022. Those both being a symbol of the first day of the 10th month, and both occurring in connection with the wheat harvest. But this ties us back to this initial message. So I think that what we have to do is we would have to put um, the formalization of the message. So we get the message arriving, December 25th, 2021. Are we going to place, you know, February 12th, 2022 as the formalization of the message? Or are we going to just do both of these as the arrival of the message? And that the formalization of the message is January 11th, 2023, and December 25th, 2022. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and, and why would we place them there? And what is there in, in this chapter that's going to give us this information? So if you can keep that in your mind, what you're doing looking at that chart. <clears throat> So he's going to release these foxes. Now, now these foxes are released. What are they? So we know there's 300 of them. They're turned tail to tail. There's a firebrand in the midst between the two tails, and he releases this upon uh, the shocks and the standing corn, right, and the vineyards and olives. So this is a message that is going to 
attack the message of the Philistines, right? That's, I believe, what we came up with earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And this message is related to the message that Colin and Odilios presented. There are two messages. So, um, and, and we don't need to do anything ironic with that other than the moral aspects of it. We know that these, these messages are connected to the symbol of the 300. So this would be an explanation of the 300, because we already tied the 300 to the message of July 18th. But we have this 300 again, right? So this 300 is something that continues It's not about the number of people, even though, you know, it is in, the, in Gideon, but it's a symbol. And, and one is it's a symbol of a structural chiasm, because when it's first mentioned is the two periods of 150 days. The, we often see it as 300. And, and in the story of Gideon, there's going to be three groups of 100. Gideon joining another group. So I guess one group's 101, but Gideon's the leader. Um, so you have 300 there div divided three ways, but often you see it divided two ways. So you got 150 foxes tied to another 150 foxes. And then we know that there's this great slaughter, right? So, how do we understand this great slaughter? What symbol do we attach to that? Um, and then there's this negotiation regarding a tying up Samson and giving him into the hands of the Philistines. When that occurs, he finds a new jawbone of an ass and he takes that and kills a thousand men with this jawbone of an ass. Right. And then he's going to be uh, thirsty. And God's going to make a, a hollow place in that jawbone so that he can drink. So there's going to be water in it. And he's going to be revived. Right. So how are we going to place all of this in our line? What events are these marking? So um, we related the water as um, like a well, didn't we? That hollow spot was sort of somewhat like a well. Isn't that what we determined earlier? Um, I, I don't know what you mean. Well, as we were going through that study, um, I seem to recall that, that it's the hollow place is a location, not the literal Java. I think that's what we determined earlier. Okay. So he finds but, water. Yeah, he found water in a hollow, hollow place. Right. But it's connected symbolically to the jawbone. Right. Okay. Um, and what did the water represent? Wasn't that the word? Well, yeah, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, right. So... How did that apply to us at that time we're talking about? And this was beyond 2019, right? 
Yeah, we were referring to John 4 at that time. Christ said he, he is the living water. The, the well containing the living water. Right. Yes, I remember that part. The time frame that we're we're trying to apply this to is is there around 2019, right? It, uh, uh, well, 11 nine. To applying well. In that time is, frame. Where, well, yeah, but we're applying this here to the second angel's message arriving. So remember, when we're looking at this waymark of Samson, it is the arrival of the third angel's message in the line of the judges. But the line of the judges is a zoom into 9-11. So you're right. going to see all of these symbols of 9-11 all through these lines. And 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel's message, which is the Sunday law, right? So, so you're going to see these symbols all through these lines. But primarily in this line, what we see is we have this period of darkness, which has to do with the Philistine oppression. That's the understanding of the scriptures, according to the Protestant method of understanding. The message arrives at 9-11. And there's this increase of knowledge, but the formalization of that message is 11 9, 62 times 107 days later. And then we have July 18th and December 25th, 2021, which is this period of 777 days. On December 25th, 2021, and February 12th, 2022, we have this seven week. Uh, span from Colin's presentation to Adilio's. These represent, um, yeah, so we know the jawbone of the ass represents Islam. So this is going to be connected to our prediction. But also further to what we know is coming, that Islam was not uh, a mistake. Uh, it was Nashville. We just didn't understand how to apply that, right? So now we have the second message arrives, and this message is a message to those that are benefited by the first message, right? So this movement goes through this studying period, right? And uh, we're going to come to these solutions that are going to be uh, proposed, Let's say, let's put it that way, to, to uh, the problem of the understanding that we had both with July 18th, which is primarily Odilio's concern, and then the Trump prediction, which is primarily Colin's concern, right? Those happen seven weeks apart. That's the second angel's message arriving. There's a message that comes to this movement in connection with that. Now, it's the understanding that we have a chronology that allows us to even see that those messages are significant. They're incomplete in and of themselves. That is, they're not well understood because we have a lot more information to glean from them. But it's going to come to a formalization of the message. And, and these are marked by two dates, the December 25th, but this time one year later anniversary date, the bone date, right? Um, and that's going to be uh, when I present again the, um, the line simply presented. So we start this new uh, presentation. And then we're going to have uh, the end of Colin's prediction, not as he measured it, but as it should have been measured. Because that gives witness to these other dates. So January 11th. Um, 2023. So both of these are symbolically the first day of the 10th month. One literally is, but it's still symbolic. That is December 25th, uh, 2022 is the first day of the 10th month. And also January 11th, 2023 is a symbol of that because that's where the divorcement starts. And 
We have the two different applications you see above, how we can take lunar months, three lunar months of 30 days. So we're going to take those a day for a month. And that becomes 2,658 days, which goes from December 25th, 2022 to April 5th, 2030. Or we can take um, prophetic months and the actual literal days from 457 BC, from the first day of the 10th month to the 10th day, or first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. And we multiply 30 by 88, and that's 2,640, which is the number of days from January 11th, 2023 to April 5th, 2030. So these give us this April uh, 5th, 2030 date. Now, if, you know, where are we going to put that on the line? You know, so maybe we could say that, you know, somehow we would put each of these separate dates. I mean, we could have put, you know, the arrival of the message is December 25th, 2012, and the formalization is Odilio's presentation. And then we could have said the second angel is empowered on December 25th, 2022, and the third angel arrives on January 11th, 2023, right? So we could have done that. Any, any thoughts on that? I mean, that would be more consistent with what we've done as far as placing January 11th, 2023 as the arrival of the third angel in the line of the judges. So January 11th, 2023, the third angel arrives. But here we have it as the second angel formalized is the way that I've drawn this out. So can it, somebody help me sort through this? So um, remind me of the... January 11th, 2023. It's the end of college prediction. Okay, right. Right. Now, in connection with that, we're going to come to understand some things. Right? So what do we come to understand in connection with the end of Colin's prediction? This is going to happen a bit earlier, right? So after the election on November 8th, we continue studying. We're going to get an understanding of an application for the additional extension of time from November 24th. And so, you know, maybe we should put November 24th in here somewhere. So we could, we could move this over, right? And put November 4th here. Does that make 24th? sense? 24th? 24th? Yeah, November 24th. Oops. So if we put November 24th here, Twenty twenty two, we could put that as a formalization, and then we would put the empowerment at the end of that period. So we're going to have, have December twenty fifth to January eleventh, and and this is going to be that symbol of two six eight eight, right? So um, that's going to be. Um, 2,688 days to April 5th, 2030. So you got 2,688 days being marked. You have 2,658 days being marked. You have 2,640 days being marked to April 5th, 2030. Now, do we put April 5th, 2030 as the third angel arrives? Or do we just move some of these dates over in some way? 
But they're all pointing to April 5th, 2030. Right? They do have that uh, flavor tone. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could, we could do this, right? So we could move this over. And we could move this over and say that's not a formalization, that's an empowerment. And then we could split this into two. Right? So th that's another way that it can be done. So if we did this, Okay. Understand what I'm saying? Now, I don't know which is the best way to do this. I don't know what the correct way to do this is. There's just one way to do it. Any thoughts about this? <clears throat> you guys need to give more suggestions. Cause... Well, you have the same date for for uh, the 2A and the 2F there. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So that's going to be the... 12-22. Yeah. February 12-22. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so we got this line. It's going to give us all these witnesses to April 5th, 2030. So that's what we did with Samson before. We, this is how we looked at Samson. These are the dates that we gave. Now, what this doesn't do is it doesn't work in chapter 16. But what we can say is that chapter 16 must be a repeat of history. So if we're going to be doing what we, we have started doing is we're adding the fourth. Once you get the fourth angel arrives. And you have the eighth. Well, this would be in connection with this date, whether this is literal or not, um, April 5th, 2030. So let's do it this way. Right? Well, it's it makes sense that way. I mean, because we're the last couple of times we did this very same thing only through what we've noticed, not necessarily we just did it arbitrarily. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we've worked this out. I mean, we've, we've, we've created these dates already in the story of Samson. We just placed them on a line. 
So we didn't have to really, you know, dig that far because we spent a lot of time on Samson. And, and we could say that this makes sense as a line that we're now in this third angel's message. So October 22, 1844 has now passed for this movement. And even though we tried to look at that as being uh, July 1820, that's just Samuel Snow's last letter, right? Typifying what's going to happen. And then we see uh, this occurring in this line. So, and, and we can just say, you know, it starts before, it starts after, however you want to look at it. It's not going to, um, you know, July 18, 2020 occurs before midnight. Um, you know, how, how we're going to look at that in connection with Millerite history. I think it's just simply Snow's message begins before uh, the second angel arrives, right? That second angel arrives December 25th, 2021, 20, at the end of that 777 structure. So now we're, we get to this third angel arriving. Our movement has come to this point. However, we want to understand it, where we now are in symbolically that third angel's message. Now, the fourth angel really represents the Sunday law, right? We know that December 25th, 2021 on our line was the Sunday law. But here in this context of Ellen White's line, the third angel arrives October 22, 1844. She sees off in the distance Revelation 18, the mighty angel of Revelation 18 coming down, right? And that's going to be the Sunday law. That's how she sees it. So now, if we're going to say that this fourth angel arriving is this April 5th, 2030 date, we would have this temptation to say, well, that's the date of, of the Sunday law, which, of course, we know that we can't know. But at least it symbolically represents that. So we're not saying anything's happening on April 5th, 2030. We just have these symbols in our movement at the present time that point to that date that gives us these other symbols that relate to what we already understand. A person could argue, well, we need something to happen on April 5th, 2030. I would say we just need a, a future symbolic date that witnesses to our present situation. That date may have nothing to do with any event of when things are coming. It can simply just be a witness. So this, so this movement is definitely in this history where we need to figure things out, right? We've, we've given, been given time to figure things out, however long that time is. I mean, we made an application for an extension of extra time, of additional time, right? That's the idea of that document in the taxes, form 2688. Sorry, yes. Uh... That was 2688 was the form number that found on the internet. Right. So the application for additional extension of time to file the U.S. individual income tax return. Right. Here's one, one of these forms. <clears throat> so it's form number 2688. So it's an additional extension of time. It's an application. And are we applying in this movement for an additional extension of time we would have to say yes yeah, i would I, yeah i would say yes <laughs> yeah whether that april 5th 2030 date represents an actual date um 
I don't I don't think it does an actual event, but I think it symbolically represents that. Being 2,300 months from the first day of the first month in 1844, being 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months, or being 186 biblical years from that date. So, so we have all of those symbols. Now, what we would have to look at then is how the story of Samson and Delilah relates to the Sunday law, because um, that is, it's going to relate to the April 5th, 2030 date in a more direct way. Does that make sense? So this time I am going to send out the charts that we drew out here uh, to everyone so that you can look at them before our study on Sunday, Sunday morning, when we address chapter 16. And, and the one thing we need to do with remember is that each of these chapters has a, a line as well, but chapter 16 um, I think that line is is this entire line of Samson that is it it it, it witnesses to April fifth, twenty thirty, but it witnesses to it in in a very specific way. So you'll, you'll see what I mean. <clears throat> okay. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Not right now. Now, has this been helpful, what we've been doing this week? It's given quite a bit for us to all think about. Yeah, because sometimes I feel like I'm just producing these lines on my own. No. Help, but... Yeah, it's... But we can see how they fit. Whether that's correct or not, that's another question. Right. Okay. Okay, well, let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this study again. And for each person who's participated and those that watch these videos, we ask that you can continue to help us uh, to understand these lines. and. Um, that you can lead this movement. We give our hearts to you. We give you our lives. We ask that you can use us to your glory and by your power. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.